Well, welcome to another build. It's been a long time since I posted one, but we're back. And this time we've got the Revell slash monogram Ford F-150 pickup truck. The flare side model. And uh, this is incorrectly labeled as a Ford Ranger. Um, it's wrong in two different ways. First of all, it's not a Ranger trim package of an F-150, and second of all, it's not a Ranger pickup. So what is this thing exactly? Because there's no year on the box or anything. Well, this is a 1980-81 to 81 F-150 flare side, four-wheel drive. And uh, this originally came out in uh, 1980, I believe, because it's copyrighted 1980 on the mold. This was originally a monogram kit. It came in a uh, box with a red vehicle on the cover and uh, I think it was molded in red as well it had different decals in it did not have these big uh, billboard decals but uh, this is a monogram kit and Ravel's repackaged it and it's been out for quite a while I mean you can find this kit pretty much everywhere but I've been uh, wanting to build this for a while and finally dug it out and uh, it's the first one of this new season here for the winter so we're gonna have a look at it and uh, I'll tell you what I think I do my reviews on these kits after I build them, and my build philosophy is build them straight out of the box for the most part. Occasionally I'll swap a couple parts around, maybe different wheels and tires, but I do not uh, super detail these with wiring on the engines or anything like that. This is what you get in the box and how it will look for an average model builder putting it together. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get a look at this thing. We'll spin it around here in the turntable and get a good look at this guy. Um, it looks pretty good to me. Um, the reason I actually build it this way, I am loath to build kits copying the box art. <laughs> That's just a pet peeve of mine. So I generally won't do that. However, in this case, I actually had a uh, fun weekend when these trucks were new driving one of these. And it was a black truck with silver billboards, which I think is the more common color scheme. I don't know that this actually ever existed. Uh, but this is how Ravel decided to do the decals. So I wanted to build this truck this way, even though it's the opposite color scheme of the one that I drove. Um, it's, you know, a fond memory truck. So I wish they had done these billboard decals in another color. Uh, silver would have been um, offered a lot more opportunities for different color schemes. The black, you're kind of stuck with silver or white, um, unless you do a custom color. Uh, so I don't know why they chose to do it this way, but they did. So here we are with it. And I did a, a red interior just because I kind of think the truck I drove had a red interior, but I could be wrong on that. So anyway, I did the, uh, the blacked out grill because the certain trim levels of this truck would have a blacked out grill like that. Um, obviously the box art indicates that you can do silver with just the black done on the insets. The lenses are separate for both headlights and turn signals, which makes for a really nice look. They do come with separate side marker lenses. However, I chose not to use those because I couldn't figure out a decent way to attach them without ruining these decals for the side markers. So just put the decals on. I think it looks fine. The billboard decals um, are okay. <laughs> they, they work pretty well. I mean, you know, you see them on this truck, they look pretty good. Um, they are a little fussy to put on. I do not care for Ravel's decals versus uh, AMT Round 2's. Uh, Round 2 makes much better decals than AMT does, or excuse me, Ravel does. These are both thick and difficult to get to lay down over some contours and at the same time are easy to tear. So I tore the front fender and the rear fender back over here on one side. I can't remember what it was. But uh, yeah, and getting these to lay down on the corners, especially on the bed, these uh, angles here are surprisingly difficult to get laid level which uh, you wouldn't think would be a problem because it's not a very s severe angle. Anyway, lots of solve set and they kind of sort of cooperated, but I do have a couple of wrinkles. Hopefully you won't be able to see them jump out. The black kind of hides it. 
but uh, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of their decals. But they do work. I mean, when you're when you're done, it looks pretty good. These uh, trims here are also separate decals, and this truck is actually a custom level truck, which means it's the base model truck. It's not even an XLT. It's not a Lariat. It's just a custom. So. It's a, uh, you know, vinyl bench seat truck. Um, why they decided to call it a Ranger on the box art, only Monogram will know. And Ravel, of course, just copied what Monogram had on their box art instructions once they got a hold of these molds. So The tailgate letters are also decals, as are the tail lights. And again, uh, just put those on and didn't do anything special to those. I did change the license plates. Um, I wanted to use the license plates that came in this kit, which are really nice, um, for something else. Because this truck is a 1980-81, and so I went with a more vintage license plate. I think I found some old Michigan plates from something, I don't know what. Um, they're a little small because they're 125th, and this is a 124 scale, but I don't care. The wheels originally in the box are chrome. I decided to do them as the factory white spoke wheels with the black hubs. So I dechromed those and dechromed a few other parts too under the hood as usual. Um, it comes with a rear view mirror for the windshield, but that gets mounted to the center of the glass. It doesn't get mounted to the roof on this model. And I didn't really like the way that that was going to look, and also, it, you know, you really run a risk of screwing your glass up trying to do that, even with a clear glue like uh, I use Micro Crystal Clear. But you'll notice that the box art version, he didn't put a mirror on his either, so there's that. The Ford letters on the hood are molded in. They're not very uh, pronounced, but it does come with those letters on the decal sheet as well. And if it's you want to make a truck that's not an 80 or 81, you would just need to remove those letters from the hood. Um, I think that means that it should have a blue oval on the grill then, but of course that doesn't exist here, so you can't do that. Um, other decals are for the bed, and this was kind of interesting. I hadn't seen this before. The bed ribs, the metal ribs in the bed there between the wood planks, and this would have a wood floor in it, uh, are decals. And these are the first ones I, inst I installed and was not at all happy with how these turned out. And I'll zoom in here so you can see that they did not lay flat. And a lot of, a lot of Solvacet and still could not get these things to lay flat. Um, blotting them, trying the Solvacet, I mean, they just would not lay flat. So they have bubbles under them. And there's little, you know, uh, bolt heads in the floor that they won't sit down around. And it was kind of annoying for me to install these because I think they would look nice. But no such luck. So they were a disappointment. I'm not sure if I'd build another one of these if I'd try to use those again or if I would just paint them. You do get the American flag decal, which I stuck in the rear window. I thought that was a nice touch. The tailgate can be made to pivot, but the pins down here are very small. And uh, the thing just kept falling out. So I wound up gluing it in place. The rear bumper, no, was not chromed in the kit. All right, we'll see if we can get you a little bit shot of the interior here. The interior um, for a monogram actually was kind of disappointing. The instrument panel detail is very faint. And I was hoping that they would have given us decals for the instrument faces because this one would have been a prime candidate for it, but no such luck. So I wound up just painting the things black. I couldn't really pick out any detail on them because the detail that was there was so faint. So that's kind of blah. <laughs> door trim panel details okay. I mean, I picked out the door handles and you know that kind of stuff in there. But um, the interiors good, but not great. This is a rather odd assembly procedure. The cab wall at the back is a separate piece, as you'll notice here. There's a pretty good seam around here, and it's not a very good seam. Um, it should probably have more time spent on it than I gave it. 
to try to make it fit a little bit better and close up. I mean, you know, there's a really ugly cap you can see there. Now this is worse because I'm magnifying it with the camera um, on the shelf. You don't really notice it. But uh, that's one aspect that I didn't much care for. And we'll get to some more assembly notes here as we, we look at the underside of this thing. First, we'll go under hood and see what we got there. And the hood fits uh, pretty well. Get a little assistance on getting that up. And the hood will stay up by itself, which is kind of nice. It's got a little knob nub there on the cowl that'll hold it. So here's your underhood detail. Not a whole lot going on here. And this is one place where this kit really starts to fall apart. Um, not physically, but in, in how it was made. The uh, inner aprons and fender wells on this thing are totally wrong. These are shaped like an earlier dent side truck and they're just wrong. <laughs> There's no two other ways to say it. Um, I think the detail under the hood might be in the right places as far as the heater box and the battery and that stuff goes, but these, uh, these raised areas here that go to the firewall are just wrong. A uh, typical monogram firewall molded in and it doesn't have a lot of detail on it. It's you know, kind of flat and bland there at the back. They do give you a master cylinder that's molded in, but uh, that part isn't, isn't too great. Um, engine is okay. You know, it's a 302 factory manifolds. I left the current valve covers on for once uh, just because I was ready for a little bit of bling in my life. Um, the air cleaner, I think on this model year was supposed to be silver, so I painted it that way. Um, if it's not right, forgive me. Radiator and radiator support are all one piece. And that's kind of all I can say about that. It's got a serpentine belt set up. It's pretty well done. Separate carburetor, separate distributor. Um, that's kind of all. It's all about what we can say there. Uh, while we're still in the front end here, worst fitting part on this kit is the grill. And as you can see, it kind of, I wasn't sure if it was supposed to stick out a little bit or not. The box art shows it more flush. Uh, I think it's actually supposed to fit more flush than I have it here. I just got it to sit against the radiator support at the uh, top, but I don't think it's quite right. And I think more, more trimming would have helped it. I had to trim it quite a bit to get it to fit that well. So that was the worst fitting part in the entire kit. The rest of it went together pretty well. As this typical monogram, I find that their stuff kind of falls together. Um, so it's good for beginners, but on this kit, I would say maybe not for a beginner. All right, let's put it on its roof and we'll have a look at the undercarriage. All right, and here we are underneath. So Monogram uh, gave us a separate frame. It does have the spare tire carrier molded in. And there's a giant... Uh, trademark lettering thing going on in that spare tire cover that I had to sand off because it was pretty hideous. So you want to take that off, but uh, it would have been nicer if they just gave us a, a plastic spare tire or something to put in there instead of that bland looking thing. Um, the fuel tank's part of the frame. That's got to be picked out with paint separately. The rear axle and springs is all one unit with the drive shaft already attached. Same with the front suspension that has the drive shaft already attached and the torsion bars and all that are just one piece assembly. There are separate springs. And the way this goes together is not necessarily intuitive. Um, very small glue spots here for these guys which have little pins on them. And then the other spot is you've got to glue the springs in and then the axle glues to the springs and that holds it. Um, incredibly somehow it does. The rear leaf springs were the other area where I had a fit issue and you'll see they got these large holes here in these brackets that are on the frame and the leaf springs do not really line up with them. They're inboard a bit. I don't know if there's some warpage going on here that causes that but I wound up just you know super gluing these bad boys in where they wanted to be and uh, trim the pins off. 
uh, one of the few kits I've seen that has leaf spring shackle bolts molded in. That was kind of a neat thing. The exhaust system is also molded to the frame, so you got to pick that out with paint. That's always fun. Transfer case is a separate part. But the underside is kind of, I mean, it's nicely detailed to a degree, but then you got this hideous under floor pan for the interior that has these giant holes in it that serve no purpose that I can see. Um, the underside of the bed is just plain and got a couple of ejector pin marks on it. So, you know, I didn't spend a lot of time on detail painting that. I mean, you probably should paint it better than I did, but you also got the fender wells here and everything. I mean, you could have blacked that out or something, I guess, but I don't know. I just, I saw this under here and these giant gaps around the interior tub and I'm like, why bother? So again, these go in the display cabinet when I'm done. Nobody ever sees some of this ugliness underneath. So I know it's there, but it's a little disappointing, but it is a 1980 kit. So maybe that's what we have come to expect. And I think that's it for the undercarriage. Um, engine transmission is all one piece. Uh, there is a Y pipe that's separate. And it lines up fairly well with the manifolds and the rest of the exhaust. Can't complain about that. It's usually a problem area. So aside from those goofy leaf spring attachments and the bad grill, Everything else actually fits together very well. Um, putting this final assembly together with the body to the frame is a little, little peculiar. The main glue point is going to be here on the floor pan to the frame. And then the bed and the cab get joined together. There's a ridge cast into the back side of the cab wall. And you glue the bed to that. And then the bed gets glued to two little points there in the very back of the frame. Very strange uh, how this goes together. It works okay, and I would suggest maybe using a, a super glue type adhesive to, to do some of this so it stays together. But uh, it's it's just a little odd. I think uh, well, I think the AMT Ford uh, F150 might be a little bit better engineered in this regard, but they also molded the floor pan to the frame and then you have to paint that all separate. So that's kind of a pain. I don't know which is worse. It's a lesser of two evils, I suppose. All right, we'll flip her back up and then give final thoughts. Okay, so what do we think of the pretty much only bullnose Ford truck kit that's out there? Um, final product, as many of these are, looks pretty good. Um, it has some flaws and it shows its age a little bit. Um, it's not probably my favorite monogram kit that I've ever built. I generally like doing monogram kits. Uh, they're easy to assemble. The details are usually pretty good. Um, but they do lack oftentimes here and there a little bit on certain, certain details. This is probably a... Four out of five stars, I would guess, if I was going to rate it on a star system. Um, you only really kind of get this one choice of a flare side. I don't believe that this was ever made as a standard bed truck, although I've seen some people adapt some of the other beds from uh, AMT kits to these using a, a extended frame and so forth. Uh, it was available also as a Bronco model. For a couple of years. I have not seen that reissued here that you can buy that. So that's going to be one you're going to have to find on eBay or to swap me. But as a bullnose pickup truck kit, I think it looks pretty good. I just wish these decals would have been available in more than just black. But that said, there you go. If you're looking for a bullnose Ford pickup truck, it does exist. You can buy these pretty much anywhere. Ravel's still cranking them out, I believe, as we speak. And as you can see, it makes for a decent model when you're done. All right, folks. More Fords coming. Got a couple Mustangs on the docket and some more trucks. 
So if you like this uh, review and want to see some more, please do subscribe. I also do some live 1-1 one -one scale car stuff, as you'll notice in my uh, playlist. But uh, more model kits coming. I always do these over the winter months when it's too cold to be outside. And so we'll have more of these for you in the very near future. As always, thanks for watching, and I love to read your comments below. Take care. See you soon.